And hello everyone, and welcome back to Arcade Saturday. Every Saturday I try to go out and find an arcade game, classic arcade game, that we can play and talk about and relive the memories of. Uh, today we're going to try something a little bit different. I have been wanting to do this for a couple weeks, I just either haven't gotten around to it, or I completely forgot about it, and I feel bad for that. But, one thing that happened last month, uh, January 22nd, uh... I'm hoping I'm getting his name right, uh, Masaya Nakamura. Uh, if you don't know who that is, he is the founder of Namco. Uh, this is the man that has been called the father of Pac-Man. This man created Namco, which created tons of video games. Uh, just absolutely amazing how many games Namco has gone on to make uh, through the years. Just, I was just going through the list... Uh, as I was waiting for uh, these games to download again because I actually got rid of them on my PlayStation uh, because I wasn't really playing them too much. But just going through the list, I mean, Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, Xevious, Galaxian, Ridge Racer, Katamari, Damacy. Are you kidding me? Katamari, Damacy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mappy, uh, Pole Position, Soul Calibur, um, Rally X... Ace Combat, uh, Bosconian, oh my goodness gracious, me oh my, you got Tekken in there, um, there's a lot of sequels to these, that's why I'm kind of skipping through right now, there's a lot of sequels, uh, Xenosaga, did they do Xenosaga, really, this says Xenosaga episode 3, maybe they just did episode 3, I don't know, uh, Super Pack, did I say Tekken, I probably already said Tekken, um, I mean these, they, they've done all these great, great games. And it was all because of Nakamura. Now, he was born, believe it or not, the day before December, or the day before Christmas, uh, December 24th, 1925, uh, had started a business uh, company which created kitty rides for department stores. Uh, renamed the company Nakamura Amusement Machine Manufacturing Company, Namco eventually bought out uh, Atari's uh, Japanese division, and they started producing games. And that's how Namco became a video game company. It's absolutely amazing. I was just sitting here, like I said, going through, just looking up some history, because I, I, never, I never look up any history on any of these games as we go, or as we do these. And I said, you know, today... I'm going to do it. I'm going to look. I'm going to see what's going on. And, you know, look at the history. Because I I've, I know there are many, many people that are responsible for bringing video games to us. Uh, I can name several of them off right off hand. Uh, Kajim has always been the big one. Uh, Ni Nigel Bushnell was the man... Or Nolan Bushnell, I'm sorry was the man who founded Atari. Uh, without Atari, we're not here. Um, right off the top of my head, my brain is drawing a blank for all these all these great video game creators. Man, I, I suck. Sometimes I suck, sometimes I'm good. You, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know this by now. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, go check them out. Why not? Uh, don't watch the very first ones, though. They're, they're kind of... I've, I've Saw the Pac-Man one just recently. Yikes. Anyways, uh, but today I said, instead of us going out and playing some other game that, you know, I usually go out and play, like, recently we've been doing the Atari Flashback Classics. We've been having some fun with that, playing games I've never heard of before. Uh, but I said, today, what we're going to do, since what we usually do every Saturday is we take four quarters, which is which is basically one playthrough at a time. I said, we're going to take four quarters. We're going to put one quarter into four different games. And we're going to sit and play those games in honor of Nakamura son. Uh, because he gave us this. I honestly doubt without Pac-Man, video games would not be where they are. Let's be honest. Uh, before Pac-Man, there were games. There were video games. Don't get me wrong. 
But before Pac-Man came around, video games were not a household name. Arcades were not a place where the normals go to, you know? I mean, before that, they, they were kind of run down, you know, dingy little places where only the diehard arcade guys would go and play games. When Pac-Man came around, you started seeing grandparents bringing their grandchildren in. You started seeing moms and dads coming around. The, the, the normal people started coming into arcades and playing games. And Pac-Man did that. And in order for Pac-Man to even be around, Nakamura had to give Toru Iwatani... I'm reading his name. I, I, I had it in my head. <laughs> Taru Iwatani had to give him a chance to develop this game based off of a slice pulled out of a pizza. You know, I mean, it w would you ever really think that this yellow blob that goes around eating these dots and then eats ghosts would ever become a thing? But for some reason it did. And without Pac-Man, we would not be here. We would not be in this position. We might be somewhere else, but I doubt it would be nearly as cool as it is. So, we're going to play Pac-Man, and then after that we're going to play some other ones. So, let us get into Pac-Man. I've already played through this game twice. Um, there are two different videos that are floating out there. If you want to go check those out, like I said, please feel free. Go check them out. I know the first one. Uh, that, that first video I ever did, I started out, I said, this is the game, this is the very first game I ever played in my entire life. This is Pac-Man. <laughs> this is this is the one that uh, I was pulled into an arcade at the, the ripe young age of, God, five? <laughs> Maybe three? I don't even know. But it was the first one I ever got to put a quarter in. It was the, it was the first one I ever got to play. I don't even remotely remember how good or bad I did back then. I, I I wish I did. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome for me to sit here and say, oh yeah, oh man, I got, uh, you know, such and such amount of score. Yeah, yeah. I, I was way too young. I have no clue. Absolutely no clue uh, how I did on that first game. Oh, ouch. Wow, that's so great. Um, <laughs> of course... To be able to honor the memory of the man who founded Namco, I die almost immediately with the most horrible score in the world, 3,420. Yikes. Well, still, though, we're playing games in tribute to Nakamura. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start at the next game, which is going to be Galaga. Of course, Galaga. That's one of my all-time favorite games. So, let me start that one up. I will be right back, and we will keep on this, uh... We will keep on this tribute episode of Arcade Saturdays. And we are back. So this is Galaga, of course. This is... What is this? 1981. This says it's the sequel to Galaxian. Which, I kind of knew that. I didn't know it was actually a sequel. But I knew that the both of them shared a lot in common. Uh, they both had that kind of you know, top down, you're shooting up at the enemies coming down at you. Very similar to similar to uh, Space Invaders, things like that. Uh, but this one, without a doubt, uh, makes its way into my top ten video games of all time. Almost every single time I, I sit down and try to make a list. Um, no matter how old this game is, this is still one of my favorites. And again, this is one of those that was put out by Namco. So, of course, we have to absolutely pay tribute to Nakamura for, for putting this out, for giving me Galaga. I mean, without a doubt, I have loved this game. Absolutely love this game. Uh, and again, I made another video of this uh, somewhere along the line. Um, if you want to go check that one out, go check that one out. May or may not be better than this one, I don't know. This is this is kind of a somber, uh, somber playthrough. Um... You never really, you never really truly think of of how much uh, someone has given to you until you, you know, you go back and you look at it. Uh, as with 
as with musicians that die, you know, you, you never really think of how much music they actually gave you until you until you go back and you listen to their CDs and you listen to all those songs that you know, really they did something to you. They affected you in some way, shape, or form. And that's how I see video games is they always they always give me that feeling. Get me back to that point where I feel that you know, this was this was something that without a doubt shaped my life. That's the whole reason actually I started the channel was that I wanted to I wanted to tell the stories, my stories of video games, of how I grew up with video games, how they have affected me, uh, just everything that I, I possibly could. Because I know that other people, you know, they get to tell their tales and you know, go on about, you know, how games have affected them, you know, and, and I, oh shoot, I, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that was bad, <laughs> but I have always said, you know, I, I have a story to tell just like everybody else, um, it may not be any better or any worse than anybody else's, oh, you've got to be kidding me, but it's my story, I can't believe that, man. Did I double up the score from Pac-Man, at least? Holy smokes, that was bad. That was really bad. You know, some, some days you, you, have a good, uh, you have a good playthrough, and some days you just have a bad playthrough. It is what it is. It happens. Wow. All right, so with that, we need to move on. Uh, I, was, I was sitting here thinking before I started this that um, I'm not even running a timer that this video is going to be as long as it's going to be, and if you don't like it, tough. You know, one of those types of things, because I usually try to keep it within 15 minutes. Uh, but as bad as I'm playing on this, I think it's going to wind up being 15 minutes anyways. Holy smokes. But the next game on the list, of course, is Miss Pac-Man, which we will get to immediately. And we're here. Just like that, it's magic. Isn't that amazing how that works? But of course, this is Miss Pac-Man. And Miss Pac-Man was not made by Namco. This was actually made by Bally Midway uh, back in 81, I think it was. Um, yes. Uh, this is actually the most successful American-produced arcade cabinets. Uh, mostly because it is an American Pac-Man. I mean, it, it was... Miss Pac-Man, which I know it's it's bad to uh, stereotype the genders in there, but Miss Pac-Man did bring women into gaming. Uh, some people like to argue that I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, I've I've talked to uh, several aunts and uncles, uh, uh, several different uh, women around the family that have said that you know. No, they didn't get drawn in by Miss Pac-Man. They may have played something else that pulled them in. It wasn't just one thing, but I think statistically, Miss Pac-Man may have pulled more in. I don't know. That's that's an argument for another time. We're not here to argue things like that. We're just here to play the game. But of course, this was so well received in America that Namco did adopt it into the family of Namco Games. So therefore, Miss Pac-Man is an official Namco game. I always liked Miss Pac-Man, uh, especially the uh, Mrs. Crackman uh, cabinets. I know I've talked about them before, uh, where you can sometimes find the uh, the sit-down cabinets where Miss Pac-Man is going like 20 times faster than she should be going. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it, it, it's some setting in the in the cabinet itself or if it's a glitch <laughs> in the game uh all i know is that it is the best way to play any of the pac-man games at all <laughs> is to is to go through and and play it or play it as, at super speed um you have zero trouble with the ghost so the only trouble you have with it going as fast as it is is that you can't keep up with it sometimes which just sounds nuts, but I I love those when I can find them. Which we used to have, uh, we used to have one 
there was a... When I used to be in a bowling league, whenever I was really young, we used to have one in the bowling alley. And it was, it was one of those where it was just like, it was super speed. And I thought that's just how you played Miss Pac-Man. I thought that, you know, you played it at that type of speed. It was just like, you know, as fast as humanly possible. But it, it wasn't. When I, when I found that out, I was like, oh wait, you know, that's, that's, Miss Pac-Man's actually rather slow. I almost think, uh, I know she's going faster in this level than she did in the first level. But I think even in the first level, she's going slower than Pac-Man actually does. I don't even know. Oh, just got an extra life. See, I'm doing a lot better on this one than I, than I did in uh, both Pac-Man and Galaga. Holy smokes. <laughs> I can't, can't believe I got killed so quickly in those games. Usually I'm better than that. But again, I haven't played these games in a long time. Um, I'm pretty much... Uh, Pretty much once I, I made those uh, those videos about these, I I pretty much just deleted them. I, I needed the space because uh, Final Fantasy 15 is a very big game. <laughs> I just want to say that right now. <laughs> it, is, it is most definitely a big game. Oh, here we go. This is where it starts getting tense. Ooh, that's all right. I got this. Nothing to it. And we should see a little scene. And thankfully I'm doing better at this game than I did the other ones. Man, I was feeling so bad. It's like, hey, I'm going to go make a tribute episode to the founder of Namco. And here I am dying at his games. Well, then maybe it's, maybe again, that's, that's might have, might be what he wanted, you know. Because, let's be honest, these are supposed to, supposed to be uh, quarter-eating machines. So, you know, maybe some of the, uh, one of the programmers did their job right on me. I don't know. <laughs> We are going to... I'm going to try to see if I can get through this without eating any of the ghosts. Um, they actually have trophies. Uh, this is... For anyone that doesn't know, all these games are part of the uh, the PlayStation 4 uh, Namco pack. Um, there was one main... Oh, shoot. There was one main Namco pack which had uh, Miss Pac-Man... Uh, no, wait. It had Pac-Man, Galaga and Dig Dug. And then you had to buy Miss Pac-Man separately. Uh, and these were the ones that I used ooh, to record the videos, the first videos I did. I should get a trophy. Let's see if I got a trophy. I didn't get a trophy. That's interesting. I wonder if maybe I had to go through two. I don't really remember. Oh, shoot. I didn't need a ghost, did I? I don't remember if I did or not. But I was looking while I was waiting for them to download. Ah, oh, crap. I was looking while I was waiting for them to download, and I was like, you can get a platinum trophy for this. Uh, oh, that was nice. Good job. <laughs> but you can get a platinum trophy for the uh, the four games. And I said, that, that's that got to be easy. You know, I mean, it's it's Pac-Man and, and Galaga, for crying out loud. But then I looked at what you had to do. I mean, we're talking like getting a level 19 you know, stage 19, it's like, I don't I don't think I've made stage 19 ever. I think the highest I ever made it on Pac-Man was, like, stage 12. You know, maybe 13. I don't think I've made it that high. I know on Galaga, I made it up to level 24. That was the highest I ever got on that. But I don't really remember what I've done on, on Pac-Man. Uh, as far as Dig Dug is concerned, uh, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but that is going to be our next game. We're flipping over to that right about now. Zoom, and we're here. All right, Dig Dug. Ah, good old Dig Dug. So this was one that I know I played a fair amount in the arcades. Uh, that was one of those bowling alley games uh, that I know I did play. I played Dig Dug more on the Atari 2600 than I did <laughs> just about anywhere. Uh, it was actually... a just uh, last night, I was going through my Atari games because I've been downloading uh, these game collecting apps uh, because I've been I've been really getting into game collecting, uh, going back buying uh, a lot of PS2 games that I had to sell off, uh, a lot of PS1 games I had to sell off. Um, we have been buying one Nintendo game every two weeks. 
basically. Uh, I, would, I would say maybe one a week at this point. <laughs> we're we're uh, we're buying up a lot of just the the crap just to say that you know I've got you know like say I've got Top Gun or say you know I've got Goonies too you know or I've got something like that. Um, but I went through my Atari stuff last night. And I pulled out my Dig Dug and I said, man, I played this game so much when I was a kid on my Atari. Uh, it's it's unbelievable <laughs> how much I've played it. And that that goes back to Namco, uh, you know, Namco creating such great games. This was made in uh, 1982. Dating myself, I was five years old. Uh, but... <laughs> This goes all the way back to 1982. This was... Let me see here. Uh, it runs on Namco Galaga hardware. Interesting. Uh, nothing nothing spectacular. Really nothing spectacular, honestly. You look through these Wikipedia pages, there's, there's not much going on here. But it's... If you don't know Dig Dug, you're basically a miner or something. I don't really know the whole story. Uh, and you are killing monsters underground. I don't know why there's there's these red balls that have goggles on that are trying to eat you, or the the dragons. I don't I don't get that either. But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So here is our last quarter. We are gonna throw it in Dig Dug, and we'll see how good we are. I don't know. Uh, I was saying in the last game that uh, these have trophy support. And one of the trophies that you can get on Dig Dug is to not dig anything. Now, I know I've done this on the Atari. Oh, God. This is going to be rough. I know I've done this on the Atari, and it's not hard uh, to do. It really isn't. You just have to be careful. Let's see if I can get him. And then the dragon, this is going to be cake right here. So I'm going to get a, a trophy, guys. you got to wait until uh, there's going to be like a quarter of the screen is going to go completely black. Here it is. There it is. Trophy urn. Clean harpoon. Nice. I don't remember what the other trophies were. I just That was the one that I saw that I said, you know what? I can do that. I can totally do that one. Ah, of course I died. That was horrible. But you get points for uh, digging, I think, don't you? Yes, you do. So, you know, it it's in your best interest to, to go through and dig, especially if you're going for points. I've, I've never really thought about points on these games. Um, you know, the only time... Oh, shoot, I thought I had them. Oh, man. The only time I've ever really worried about points on these games is if I was playing a, a friend. And, uh, oh, shoot... That dragon's out to give me any. And, and I've, I, you know, that's the only time I've ever really worried about points. I've always tried uh, to get as far as I can. Uh, it's always been about getting levels. Um, just to see, you know, because I've always heard the stories of only, you know, certain arcade games, they can only go up to a level, you know, such and such. And, you know, after that, you can't, you can't go any further or, or something like that. And that's always been the way it, it, it's been for me. Is, you know, I play Pac-Man until I die, and, you know, whatever my score is, is whatever my score is. A game like this, you know, I'm not worried so much about it. I'm just, I try to kill all the monsters. Uh, not worried about the, not worried about the score, not worried about uh, getting any of the bonuses or anything like that. Because I know you can get, like, the bonus, uh, the bonus mushroom or the bonus, uh, what is it, a pickle? You get a pickle, I think it is. <laughs> this is some kind of something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man, we're talking about Dig Dug's pickle. <laughs> but that, that goes right along with uh, with Namco creating such great games that you can you can sit back and look at it. And think, oh, shit, yeah, I'm dead. You can sit back and look at it, though, and think, man, you know, God, I had so much fun with that game. And I did too, especially with Dig Dug on the Atari. I uh, I used to try to clean the map. I know I said this in the in the uh, video that I did on it, uh, but I used to go from 
the right side all the way over to the left side and try to completely clear the map of dirt. And that's not easy. Let me tell you that right now. That is not an easy feat. It is possible, but it's not easy at all. But there you go, man. That's, that is the best tribute that I could possibly try to do for uh, Messiah Nakamura. Uh, again, he's the man who created Namco. Uh, without him, we possibly would not have video games the way that they are today. Uh, he's, he's one of those, he's one of those ultimates. He's not even really a video game creator. He's just, he's one of those guys that help shape video games as a whole. Uh, there's a reason why they call him the father of Pac-Man because without him, you wouldn't have Pac-Man without him. You wouldn't have video games. Uh, again, I say you would cause you know, see, look, there's a mushroom right there. Again, you would have video games, but it, I don't think that it would have achieved the kind of popularity that it has today uh, without Pac-Man. Without Pac-Man, there's not much. You know, I mean, it's it's like you can't say, you know, without Pong, you know, video games would be such a thing. Because honestly, without Pong, there really wouldn't be video games. There would be something else that we can't really determine. But Pong came along, and then you started getting games in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, uh, that were, you know, they were good. There were some good games there. I, there's a lot of uh, Atari games on that fla- flash, bleh, that flashback collection that uh, are really, really great games that were made in the 80s, you know, 1980, you know, 1979, 1980, that it's just like, wow, you know, this was before Pac-Man. It was, but it was Pac-Man, Pac-Man and Namco pushing the boundaries of video games. It was them who made video games as big as they are, that brought them to the forefront, that brought the parents of the kids into the arcades, that brought the grandparents into the arcades, that brought women into the arcades, that they were the ones that brought these people into the arcades and said, look, you know, this isn't just for, you know, teenagers and 20-something year old men. You know, this is this is something for everybody. And without Nakamura, we would not have that. So this was my tribute. As as good as it could be, as bad as it was, I don't know. <laughs> I tried, believe me. Um <laughs> This was, again, this was something that I wanted to do when I heard about him passing. I had said, you know, this was something I, I want to do. I, I want to do like a little tribute video, um, play the games in honor of him, um, even though I died horribly. <laughs> I, I still I still think I accomplished what I was out to, out to uh, achieve. Um, if you need to know, he was 91 years old. Um uh, he lived a good, solid life, uh, and for as much joy as he he brought to everyone around the world, um, he definitely lived the best life that he could. Uh, so, Masaya Nakamura, I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you have helped to shape this old fat man's life uh, way beyond anything that I could have ever imagined, and... I cannot thank you enough for giving me that. Thank you. Now, on to whatever we hit next. Um, I don't know. Uh, Next week, we will be back on regular scheduled programming. Uh, We will probably be going back to the uh, Atari Flashback Classics, uh, trying to find a game that I've never played before. Uh, That's what we've been doing the past couple weeks, and I'm going to keep going that way. Uh, just to see. Uh, now that I've done this video, I'm starting to think about Namco games again. Uh, I know that I have not done a pole position uh, playthrough. Uh, I know I have not done what were some of the other ones. I was looking through the, the games uh, while Dig Dug was loading up. And I'm just going to run through some... I'm I'm still going to run through some titles just to just to give you a an overall idea of of what Namco has done. I haven't done Zevius, which I know I have 
on one of my collections. Pole position, which I keep threatening that I'm going to do that to you guys. I just haven't done it yet. Um, let's see what else was in here. Uh, Rolling Thunder. I don't have any. I don't have that on any copies or any collections that I have. But I loved Rolling Thunder. God, it was such a good game. It really was. And while I was looking through this list, I saw Splatterhouse. Now. You want to talk about one of those life-changing games. Splatterhouse was amazing in the arcades. I, we used to have one. It was another bowling alley game. And it was actually when we would travel out of town uh, to uh, different bowling alleys uh, for like tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, there We would find a Splatterhouse. And, God, man, we... We threw so much money into that damn machine. It was unbelievable. I love Splatterhouse. Absolutely love it. Um, and there's really not too many others uh, into the 90s. Uh, they started getting into a lot of, you know, bigger bigger cabinets, bigger games. And that was, that was about the times when we stopped going to the arcades. Um, early, mid-90s, you know. But then I was looking through, and, and um, we're down here. They were going through the games that are on different platforms, uh, like on Nintendo. Yeah, of course you've got the, you've got all the different versions of the arcade games going on here. Uh, what was the one Karnov, which I remember playing, which was not a bad game. It was a little hard. It was a little rough, but I remember that game. That was not bad at all. Um, let me see. Of course, all the Pac-Man games. There's like a ton of Pac-Man games. Oh, my goodness. Uh, da -da -da -da. There's that Splatterhouse again. Um, I'm not seeing too much on there. But I went down to the Sony platforms, which I'm a PlayStation guy. I, you know, that, that doesn't mean that I hate... Xbox, that doesn't mean anything like that. It just means I started on PlayStation. I'm going to keep going with PlayStation. Eventually, I'm going to get a, a Xbox because I would love to be able to play Forza, you know, and um, Gears of War sounds pretty cool. And maybe somebody can talk me into Halo. I don't know. <laughs> but I was looking through what they did. And of course, Katamari Damacy. Yeah, I said that at the beginning of the video. But man, you want to talk about a game. That that game was so ridiculously crazy. Just absolutely nuts. Um, what else are we looking at here? Of course, we got Ridge Racer. I mean, Ridge Racer, if you want to talk about one of those classic arcadey type of racing games. Man, I remember those games. You know, the back end sliding out of the car and the sparks flying up. Oh, God, what a crazy game. Of course, all the Soul Calibers. Uh, let me see. Tales of Destiny, which I remember playing. I don't remember if it was any good or not. I think I was drunk at the time. Dramatic pause. Uh, then all the Tekkens, of course. Uh, and then, what was the other one that I saw? They did the three Xenosagas. Which I said I didn't know they actually did that, but they did episode one, two, and three of Xenosaga. They didn't do Xenogears, but they did Xenosaga. Which I loved Xenosaga. That within itself was such a great series. And to know that Namco did that, because I didn't know. You know, you, you, it's been so long since I played it, I've totally spaced who did what. Uh, but to know that they did that, that just blows my mind. But it's, again, it's Namco, and, and we are paying tribute to the founder of Namco. That's what we're doing. That's what we've done, uh, but we said that we're moving on. We're, we're uh, going off uh, on a massive tangent <laughs> once again, but I think it was worth it. But I think I will stop tangenting. I think I will stop talking. Uh, I will say thank you guys very much for watching. Out of respect to Messiah Nakamura. And thank you for letting me have this soapbox that I could stop and pay tribute. Um, if you enjoyed it, 
If you enjoyed me wasting my quarters on Pac-Man and Galaga like I did, oy, 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 uh, leave a like because I don't think I've played that bad in a long time. I really haven't. Uh, if you if you uh, have any Namco stories or if you want to pay tribute to the man himself, please leave a comment. Leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think of Namco. Let me know your your classic Namco stories. Um, keeping keeping Nakamura in memory uh, for you know what he has done for us. Uh, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Come back next week. Uh, the best way to know how or to know when I put out new videos. Other than me saying that the title is Arcade Saturday, uh, is to hit the subscribe button because YouTube will give you a notification. Other than, <laughs> other than the name of the series being Saturday, jeez. <laughs> uh, thank you guys, man. I, I've had fun. It was a blast. Um, seriously, come back next week. I wish you all well on all your future endeavors. And I hope that the world lasts for you. Take care.